What's up everyone, welcome back to another episode of AWS Tutorial. And today I'll be talking about some of the common issues that I have run into when dealing with AWS Code Deployed and an EC2 instance. This is not meant to be an exclusive list, they're just things that I personally have run into in the past, and I hope they can help you in some way. I also have a video that talks about how to use Code Deploy to perform continuous deployments from GitHub to an EC2 instance. I'll include a link down below, if you're interested, you can check that out. And now without further ado, let's get to today's topic. All right, so I'm just gonna talk about the failures that don't have any logs, because for the ones that have logs, you can just click on it and see what's going on and then fix the problem accordingly. But for problems like this, it just tell you that it failed after the, uh, the time now you specified, but it doesn't have anything that tells you more of what happened. And if you click on view more, it doesn't really tell you anything. Um, and if this happens, the first thing I will look at is to look at the code deploy agent and see if it's installed properly in, in your EC2 instance. And the way to do that is to SSH into the EC2 instance in your terminal. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a Mac um, and I will include a link down below that has instructions on how to log into it for Windows users. So first open terminal and then do ssh-i and then the key pair that you have saved in your laptop and then ec2 user add now let's go to the ec2 instance and then copy the public ip address paste it here hit yes and the way to check if the code deploy agent is running properly in your EC2 instance, you need to do sudo service code deploy dash agent status. And if you see something like this, that means the code deploy agent is not installed properly in your EC2. So now we have to install that. Um, so we need to do First is to update everything and now install Ruby because we need that to install code deploy agent. Hit yes. And then installed wget. And then we can download the package by issuing this command. And then we give it permission. Oops. And then we install that by running it. Now, if we check if it's installed properly, it should say it's running. And now let's go back to the code. Um, and push it again. And now go back to the code deployed. Now it's running and it's successful. The second problem I wanna show you is that it shows you an unknown error. And if you click in it, it's gonna tell you there's a missing credential. And what that means is that your EC2 doesn't have the proper permission to access the, the file. And what you need to do is go back to the EC2 instance to make sure that it has the proper IAM row scroll down and it doesn't have any IAM row in it. So the way to attach an IAM row to it is click on action, security, modify IAM row, and then select the proper IAM row, save, refresh, 
now we see the IM row is attached. Let's look at what's inside this IM row. So in the IM row, make sure that you have this policy attached to it. And in the trust relationship, if you hit add a trust relationship, make sure that it looks like this. It has the EC2 in the principal service. We also want to make sure that the IM row we use in code deployed is also correct. So let's get there and take a look. So let's go to code, de code deploy application. Click here. Click on the deployment group. And this is the row that we use. So let's look at that. So in this row, you make sure that you have this policy attached to it. And then in the trust relationships, make sure that you have the code deploy.amazonaws.com as the principal service. All right, so right now we just checked all the IAM rows are correct. So let's deploy again. And now let's go back to code deploy. It's in progress. And it's successful. All right, so the next problem I want to talk about is it just failed in the application stop step. And if you click on it, it just tells you that it failed with the exit code one. It doesn't mean much. And then if you go back, you just say the overall deployment failed because too many individual instances failed deployments. So what I normally do to solve this problem is that I would uninstall the code deploy agent and then delete the file and then push it again and that's gonna work. And the way to do it is we need to do that in the terminal again. So the command to uninstall the code deploy agent is sudo yam erase code deploy agent. Hit yes. All right, so it's uninstalled. And now we need to navigate to the apps folder. And we need to delete this folder. So we do sudo remove code deploy agent. Hit enter. And then to cd, go back to our EC2 user directory. And then we also need to delete the folder where we save all our files. So just do sudo remove dash r express app. Now it's gone. So now we are going to reinstall code deploy agent again. And now let's do the push again. I'll just make some nonsense change to it. Push it again. Go back to code deploy, deployments. Click on it. It should go in. All right, so it's successful again. So normally uninstalling the code deploy agent and reinstalling it would help you solve most of the problems if it's not a syntax problem in your scripts. I hope this is helpful. And that is it everyone. I hope you have learned something. And if you like this video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.